We're going to look at the book of Jude. And then we're going to look at verse 6 through 7. So there are these people who criticize me about sons of God intermingling with animals and thus produce these mermaids, centaurs, satyrs, and then all these kind of half-human, uh, half-animal weird creatures. So they criticize me. They use as a line because they don't know much Bible. Yep. They refuse to debunk me on other topics on dispensationalism. They have to take something extreme and strong to find something there out of what, that, uh, hundreds to thousands of videos we posted, and they found that one that they can use to make me look crazy. You know what? That's how desperate these people are. That's how amateur these people are. That's how much Bible these people don't know. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you, so I'm going to be bashing those people, all right? So if people believe differently from us on this teaching, I'm not bashing you. I'm only bashing those people who criticized us to begin with on this. Let's look at Jude 1, 6. Jude 1, 6. We believe in that. Why? And the angels which kept not their first estate. See that? They left heaven, but left their own habitation. Well, that's very clear. They left heaven. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Okay, so notice right here that at verse 6, sons of God, or the angels right here, they left heaven. Why? They did something that sent them to hell, whatever that is. They did something. What is it that they did? How we fill in the gap is verse 7. It's sexual perversion, intermingling, marriage with animals. Look at verse 7. Where did you get that from? Where did you get that from? Okay. First of all, verse 6 talked about the angels, right? Now look at verse 7. What does this, the first two words, it just showed up right there, first two words. What? Even as. So, verse 7 is showing right here that in like manner, even as, following the same example. So, verse 6 and verse 7 shows that they're copying each other. See, the angels left heaven. They did something what verse 7 did. What? Intermingled with animals. Keep reading. So the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, what happened? In verse 7, in like manner, in the following manner, what did they do? Following the example of Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after what? Strange flesh. There's your answer right there, strange flesh. That proves that they intermingled with animals. Oh, pastor, blah, 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 blah. Don't worry. You know, I understand because it's because you don't know the Bible yet. So I understand that, okay? I understand that because you don't know much Bible about this. So I'm going, this is, a, this is not a milk doctrine, you got to understand. That's why baby Christians, especially if they have the audacity to call them pastors, will scream on top of their lungs, pounding the pulpit with the rattler and wet their diapers saying, where did they get this idea from? This is crazy. Only baby Christians who call themselves pastors would do that because they don't know much Bible. So I understand, yeah. okay then? All right, so this, so let's, uh, let me show you this neat, deep doctrine and make it a little bit chewable for you babies out there, okay? It says strange flesh, right? What does strange mean? You can look up in an English dictionary. By the way, you can even look up the Greek word for this one as well. You know what strange means? Different. Other. Oh, that's strange. Why? Because it's different to you. They go with dispensationalism. Oh, that's weird. That's strange. That's weird. That's strange. That's right. It's different. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> okay, so... It shows different flesh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15. It's different flesh. Because what is flesh? What is normal flesh? It's humans, right? A different flesh would be referring to animals. Oh, well, I don't know. And 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15. See, it's a deep topic, I understand. So let's go through all the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 39, verse 39. 
flesh is flesh, and I don't think, no, there is different flesh. And it's not human, it's animal. All flesh is not the what? Same flesh. Can I hear that again? Same flesh, right? Yep. But there is one kind of flesh of man, and I know you don't like this, so you can be an NIV and cross this out. Another flesh of bees, another of fishes, and another of birds. See that? You know what these wick this is wicked. You know what this wick these wicked angels were doing? They were going after see different flesh. It wasn't humans. They were going after different flesh, all these kind of different fleshes. Birds, bees, creeping things. It's disgusting. Amen. Amen. By the way, let's look at Leviticus uh, 18. Leviticus 18. The Bible even called bestiality strange. Didn't you know that? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at Leviticus 18. Bestiality intermingling with animals. God specifically called. He called that strange. Look at Leviticus chapter 18, verse 23. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. So don't have intermingling with the beast. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is what? Confusion. See that? Leviticus 18, was that verse 23? That's strange. That's confusing. See that? The Bible even showed bestiality is confusing. Strange. Strange, oh, that's strange, means that's confusing. All right, let's also look at uh, Genesis 6, verse 7. Genesis 6, verse 7. See, that's why, see, that's why, unless we go to really deep doctrines, you have to carefully look at the scriptures and look at it and use your brain. See, this is not for amateurs. This is not for babies, all right? This is something for mature, grown Christians who are very careful with the word. And then they read the word so much, they, can, they understand more quickly about this. Let's look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 7. Genesis 6, verse 7. There's no doubt there was something going on with animals. You can't deny it. The sons of God had something to do with animals. There is no doubt about that. You might say, how do you know that, Pastor? Look at Genesis 6. And we'll read verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and what? Beast and the what? Creeping thing and the what? Isn't it interesting that those three kind of phrases were similarly used at 1 Corinthians 15 about different flesh, and he listed those things? Isn't that interesting? Anyways, keep reading. There's no, why? For it what? Repenteth me that I have made them. Look at that. It didn't just ma make God repent for creating man. He repented for creating animals. Repent means change of mind. God had a change of mind about animals here. See, there's no doubt. I don't care what you think. This is very clear. There's something going on here about animals. Now look at chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 21. Well, I don't know. What, let's, let's look at this. Chapter 7, verse 21. And all what? Flesh died that moved upon the earth. Who is this flesh? Just humans? No. Both of fowl and of cattle, and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was the dry land died. Now look at chapter 6, verse 12. Chapter 6, verse 12. All flesh, right? All flesh means animals too, right? Yes? Okay, now look at this. That same wording, all flesh. Verse 12, Genesis 6, 12. And... God, and God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt for what? All flesh. All flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Keep reading verse 13. And God said unto Noah, the end of what? All flesh is come before me, uh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Oh, well, God just meant humans. He's going to destroy the humans. Uh, no. And behold, I will destroy what? Them with the earth. He only destroys humans? No, you read Genesis 7. He 
when he says all flesh, are you King James Bible believer? Amen. Are you King James Bible yep. believer? Amen. Don't say, I'm a King James Bible believer. Yeah. New IFB and I'm blah, 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 blah. And you don't even know what you're talking about. You're still sucking on your milk. Don't talk like that when you don't even believe every single word as it says. All flesh means all flesh. And you saw Genesis 7 context prove it. Even Genesis 6 proved it. All flesh. Because if you look back at Genesis chapter 6, and we already read verse 7, right? See, he included man and animals, okay? Context by chapter 6. Context by chapter 7. You got scripture with scripture proving that, okay? Don't be blind now, okay? I know you want to remain a baby. Don't blame me. Don't get angry at us, dispensationalists, that you want to remain a baby and you want people online to remain like a baby like you. Yep. Because if they knew this stuff, you'd get mad and jealous and frustrated on how to take care of these people. And you act like a cult leader when they leave your church Amen. because you can't teach <laughs> Bible at all. That's right. Oh, I know you're so jealous and you got so mad. Now let's look at right here. We're going to look at chapter 6, verse 1. Chapter 6 and verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them. Now think about this. Before God started Genesis 6, think about this. Think logically now. Genesis 6, he was grieved and re repented him for creating man and animal, right? Why? The context shows, isn't it interesting that the beginning, it showed you what the context was. The context at the beginning was about sexual intermingling. Look at chapter 6, verse 1, daughters were born to them. Verse 2, the sons of God, these fallen angels, intermingled with the humans. That's why verse 3, what does he say? The Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. See that? Yet his day shall be in 120 years. Verse 4, you see the result of that intermingling? That's what made God disgusted. The context showed that. And if you don't think so, that this sexual intermingling was not a big issue during Noah's days, let's look at Luke 17. Luke 17. Luke chapter 17. Oh, it's not a big deal, uh, this uh, sexual intermingling. I don't think it was... It, it was that kind of a primary focus as you would make out. Now look at Luke 17, Luke chapter 17 and verse 27. They did eat, they drank, they what? Married, Married wives. It repeats again. They were what? Given in marriage. There's something to this particular thing that God had an issue with. See that? Until the day that what? Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Are you going to doubt? There is no doubt. There is something that God was very disgusted that has to do with intermingling. There is no doubt about that. The beginning context proved it. Luke chapter 17 in repeating showed it as well. Not only that, you got scripture and scripture that really shows something. And Genesis 6 and Genesis 7 shows there is so that the animals God had an issue with here. There is something wrong with the animals. Now, if that's not enough, I'm surprised how many verses I wrote on this one, this intermingling thing with animals. I guess because I want to make it really convincing and clear, I had to add more. Let's do this quickly then. Let's go to Genesis 6. I apologize. I want to make this as thorough as I can, okay? So Genesis 6 and Leviticus 18. Genesis 6 and Leviticus 18. Now look at this right here, Genesis 6 and Leviticus 18. In verse 7 at Genesis 6, it reads right here, The Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the faiths of the earth. Both who? Man and beast, right? Animals. Now, what is this likened to at verse 12? And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh, remember that? All flesh, all right? He had an issue with animals and humans, had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God calls that what? In verse 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. That's important to mark, mark down and remember. The earth is violated. It's defiled. The land is defiled due to sexual perversion that included bestiality. Now you might say, I don't think so. Look at Leviticus now. Leviticus 18. 
The land is defiled. That's why God had to destroy them. That's why it makes sense why God told the Israelites, the land of Canaan is defiled due to the sexual perversions of these people that included bestiality. So the land is violated and defiled. That's why you have to destroy them. See that? Same thing with Genesis 6. Look at Leviticus 18.24. Uh, defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. What things? Verse 23, right before it, what? Bestiality is included. It's like right after that. Now look at this. For in all these, the nations, see that? The earth is what? The, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you, and the land is defiled. See that? That part of ground is violated, defiled, just like Genesis 6, the earth is violated due to such sexual per perversion. So in Genesis 6, God says, because the earth is violated, defiled, I'm going to destroy them, Genesis 6. That's why Leviticus 18, God says, because that land is defiled by their sexual perversion, which included bestiality, I'm going to destroy them. He said that. Keep reading. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the what? Land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Wow, right? Wow. Now you see? Wow. Isn't that book amazing how the verse words things? Amen. Now look at Romans, Revelation 9. I'm going to skip this part. So we're going to go to Revelation 9. Revelation 9. Now I'm going to say this part quickly, okay? You guys can look up the verses on this one. But this is for people who are open-minded and willing to grow and eat the meat. Not for babies who just don't want to eat the meat. Because you won't understand this part. Romans chapter 1, verse 21, 24, 28 through 31. God has to, God has to make a sinner grow into inconvenient perversion if they choose evil. A reprobate mind. So the verse says God gave them up unto unnatural affection. They do abnormal sexual intermingling. And that verse says, because their imagination increases into darkness. Because their imagination increases to darkness, God has to, Romans 1 says, God has to give them up over to that kind of sexual, perverted mind. Now, what we believe concerning this reprobate mind doctrine is there's always hope. Because Romans 2 said, those people who committed those sins... God gives them a chance to repent, if you keep reading Romans 2. But aside from that, God has to give them up to a reprobate mind where they commit per sexual perversions. And in fact, it said even all fornication. It said that. So it includes all kinds of different fornication, including bestiality. Now, guess what? If God has to do that at Romans 1, when your imagination is darkened, he has to give you up to such sexual perversion, such as bestiality. If he mentioned that, why did Genesis 6 said the imagination of the heart was evil continually, especially right after it talked about intermingling? Now think about this. You had hundreds of years, right? Are you honestly going to tell me when God gives them to that kind of reprobate mind, for hundreds of years, not one son of God is going to commit bestiality? So logic, set, logic and common sense shows that you cannot ignore bestiality right here at Genesis 6. Okay, now let's do Revelation 9. It's not strange to believe Satan and his followers can mingle themselves with all sorts of animals. That's not strange to believe. You might say, oh, I find that strange to believe. No, because think about this. If demon, if, excuse me, if demon filled humans today, if demon possessed, demon filled humans today can commit bestiality, why not the demons themselves? It's just that simple. By the way, you got so many verses. Look at Revelation 9, verse 7. Verse 7. There is an, look at this. Satan doesn't have a problem intermingling with animals. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto the horses prepared unto ba battle. And on their heads were as, uh, it were crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of what? Men. And they had hair as the hair of what? Women. And their teeth were as the teeth of what? Lions. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 10. They mingle themselves with insects, creeping things. These demoniac creatures have no problem having an intermingling of human and animal. 
So why is this so hard to believe then? I mean, if you can believe Revelation 9, why do you have a problem believing in this one? Especially if God has to give you up to a reprobate mind that leads you to all sorts of fornication, as Romans 1 said, all fornication. Not only that, look at chapter 16, verse 13. Chapter 16, verse 13. Satan and his minions, they're not like, ooh, that's gross, I'm disgusted. No, because they're so, imagine, what? sons of God and Satan, that's just weird, you know. They wouldn't do that. Oh, it's gross. I wouldn't do that. No, because they are so evil and wicked as hell, yep. they don't hesitate to do something so gross and perverted. In fact, they wouldn't hesitate to give birth to animals. Mm -hmm. Look at it right here, Genesis 16, 13. 16, 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like what? Frogs come out of the where? Mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. You think that bestiality, that kind of mingling with bestiality is gross enough? Imagine giving birth out of your mouth. Like that. And then some weird creature pops out of your mouth. How many of you would like that to happen? <laughs> Not only that, Isaiah 34, verse 14, which we won't turn to for time's sake. But that verse talks about demoniac creatures. And guess what? It's a satyr right there. What's a satyr? It's it's a half human, half animal. See that? Demons don't hesitate. It's not, they're not like some baby Christians, all right? They're not going to hesitate with Genesis 6 that, oh, that's so hard to believe that I would never do that. No, these devils don't hesitate to do that, see? So I showed you in a, in a, a defensive manner, in a convincing manner about this. So that's what this teaching is.